Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Lorena and I love to share my recipes with you. And if you've been here before, then hello again. Today we're going to make one of my favorite things to cook. We're going to do a bread and we're going to swirl it with some cinnamon sugar and of course some walnuts just to make it a bit more interesting. If there's one thing that I can tell you about bread is that you have to be really precise when you measure out your ingredients. So if you see the recipe, you'll see that I'm using grams and that's very important because cups and uh, teaspoons are not regulated by anyone so every cup can be different from the other depending on where you are in the world. And so you'll have to buy a scale in order to make precise recipes in baking especially like this one where we are making bread. The good thing is that nowadays scales are really really cheap and you don't have to buy a really you know high tech one with a regular one it works just fine. As always if you want to see the full recipe then all you need to do is click on the link in the description box below and that will take you to the blog where you will find lots more recipes. Also remember that if you like this video you can always put thumbs up to it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already. I'm now going to make the cinnamon and walnut swirl bread so if you want to see how it's done then keep on watching this video. In here I already have my dry ingredients. I have flour, instant yeast, some sugar and salt. If you're not going to use instant yeast but rather other types of yeast like fresh yeast or dry yeast then please google the amount that is the equivalent for instant yeast. And with those you have to mix it first with a slightly warm water to activate it before you put it inside the rest of the ingredients. But because we're using instant yeast and it's already in here and on the side here I have some butter which I melted uh, a while back in the microwave and now it's cooled down to room temperature which is important because if not we're going to kill the yeast and my water is also slightly warm. So to make this dough I'm just going to put everything inside the machine and then mix it with this attachment which is the one for doughs. If you have a hand mixer you would have noticed that it comes also with a swirly thing then those attachments are actually for doughs. So you can go ahead and look for them in the very last drawer in your kitchen and I bet you've never used them but it's for this, it's for making doughs. So just make sure that you're using a large bowl for it but it works just as good or you could also knead it, knead it by hand. a bit of a mix before you put the hook in just to help it out a bit. Now we're going to let it do its work at full speed until we can do a window test. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes for me and now I can perform the window test. So once that dough passes the window test, you know that it's uh, done. What the window test is testing is that the gluten has developed enough so that it has elasticity and it's able to trap inside all the air that's going to come out of the yeast once it's inside the oven. So the window test goes like this. You grab a bowl of dough and you start stretching it out from the sides. So if this dough passes test then it's going to stretch out forming a window and if I see it against the light then I'm going to be able to see my fingers and it won't break. If it breaks it needs to go back into the machine. So this is quite thin and I can see my fingers through against the light that I have over here so this is done and we can go on to our next step. Now I'm going to shape it into a bowl and then let it rest in here until it doubles in size and the time will depend on the temperature in, in your room. Mine is quite warm right now because it's summer but uh, if you're in a really cold place then you can turn on the oven for a little while then turn it off until it's slightly warm and then put it inside. Yours will be half of this. Now all we have to do is knock out all of the air and 
and then stretch it out to the length of our mold. The reason why we knock out all of the air is because we want to redistribute all of the food that's inside here for the yeast. I've now divided my dough in half, so this is just perfect for this size of mold, which I believe is about 20 by 11 centimeters. Now I'm going to use just a bit of flour to uh, roll it out. while doing this is that this shorter side of the dough is the same size of the larger side of uh, my mold so that then I can roll it out towards, towards this size and put it in there. Now I've got here some extra butter that I have melted and it's also cooled down to room temperature already so that it doesn't do anything to our dough. Um, first I'm going to butter my mold and also add some um, flour to it. And then I'm going to also brush the dough and put in my walnuts and my cinnamon sugar. Oh, by the way, if you doubt that your um, mold won't stick, then you can put some baking paper on the large sides just to make sure. The butter is what's going to make the cinnamon, the sugar, and the walnuts stick. Once you get to the end, you're going to measure it and it's always going to be longer. So you want to tuck it underneath the seam so that it goes in at the exact size. There we go. Now we're going to let that proof for about another 20 minutes or until it doubles in size and once again. I rolled out the other bread off camera and now they are both completely proofed and ready to go into the oven. You know they have proofed it up if you touch them gently and then it comes back up. Now all I need to do is brush them with some egg wash. There was a neck here with a splash of water and that's going to make them really nice and molded on the top. Now they're going to go into a preheated oven at 180 degrees until they're really nice and golden. My bread is now out of the oven. They look amazing. They're really hot though. But I'll show you how easy it is to unmold them. You literally just do it like this. And there we go. We have our lovely bread. So now just let it cool down and you'll be able to enjoy it. That was my cinnamon and walnut swirl bread recipe. I really hope you liked it. If you did like it, don't forget to put thumbs up to this video. It makes me really, really happy. Please, if you make this recipe or any other recipe from the vlog, don't forget to send me a picture or tag me on them because I really love to see what you cook. Also, if there's anything savory or sweet that you would like me to teach you how to make, you can leave a comment below. I'm posting recipes every Thursday and Sunday, so if you don't want to miss any of them, then I recommend that you subscribe to my channel. It's free and only one click away. You can also follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook as Cravings Journal. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you next time.